Oh, let's go, my friends. Let's go. Can you hear me? Seems that my sound level... How is it? How is it now? Can you hear me? Welcome for a Sunday session. Chill session Sunday sesh. Couldn't be there on Friday because I had to... Actually, I had to prepare. I was uh, helping out with the video for uh, the friends uh, that were uh, getting married. And so I was helping, helping with the video for the wedding. So uh, basically, Friday evening, preparing for the Saturday, I had all my camera gear packed, like ready to start. Uh, and yeah, so, and the wedding was great. Uh, I didn't drink that much, so I'm still fresh, but I didn't sleep a lot the entire weekend, that's all. Oh, but let's celebrate this. And I, I'm, I'm just picking up painting for the entire weekend, which is pretty rare. Normally I, I paint all weekend, and in this case, I didn't. But uh, yeah, it's going to be kind of a, a, a little warm-up for tomorrow morning. And um, good evening everybody! Ah, yes, this music hypes me up hypes me up and yeah we're gonna do this painting again still still working on this one yeah no surprise I'm gonna make this uh, character today it's gonna be you know pretty easy because it's a back pose so nothing <laughs> nothing extremely special but this is the place where you come to for inspiration this is the number one inspiration sharing platform on the internet ladies and gentlemen sorry I'm Changing this mic. Oh, seems to be a bit loud. Okay, how about this? Can I turn around and can you still hear me? Yeah, seems that you can. All right, so this is the number one inspiration sharing platform on the internet. Come hang out and uh, have fun and do art, make art with us, and um, join the Discord. Tons of. Uh, nice people in the discord um, Cody of course always around uh, you can join the art challenge let's check out the I'm not gonna re re show you the the submissions but I'm gonna show you where you can go for the art challenge if you want you can go there and there you go this is an art challenge that we have on our discord every every once in a while <laughs> And this one is about mythology. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna spoil the first submissions, but you can check it out. The link is in the description. People are hanging out in voice chat and uh, Darth Easel and Michael. Hello to everybody uh, if you're hearing this. And yeah, let's start this thing. And let's start this painting. And um, actually, I'm going to start with the palette and show you a little trick well not not a super huge trick but oh hey thank you you inspire me i'm i'm so so happy that i do va va i don't know how i should call you hello ali hello felicia attila cody uh socrates um somebody's name in arabic that i can't read <laughs> and uh hello to everybody Um, yeah, little trick, little mixing trick while I'm starting this. Uh, as I as I said, I'm just picking up. Ah, yeah, okay. Um, so hello, Aya. Yeah. All right, just a little quick uh, mixing trick uh, is when you are not done and you know you're going to need the same skin tones, you can uh, leave you know just a, a a little bit of a little sample. A little sample just to get going and mix it again uh, so every time you have like paint left over you can keep it this one is completely unusable it's like fully like it's super sticky but it can still be used as a you know sometimes it, first of all in the inside there's still some fresh paint a little 
and well you can use that as a kind of a reference for further mixing so that's pretty cool so what's up everybody what's in the what's in the books for today i'm per, i'm going to assume that this is going to be a pretty quiet a pretty quiet session because uh, it's very unexpected that it's uh, sunday like normally i I don't stream on Sunday, but yeah, let's, um, I just want to paint and have fun, hang out. So what, what's the plan for, for this, uh, nice Sunday? How, how is the spring coming up for you here? Still, still raining. It was very warm yesterday. The wedding was, uh, they were pretty lucky. Um, the wedding was, uh, weather was nice. Not sunny, but very warm. It's like strangely warm in, in France. And now it's raining again. It, it might, you know, it might, Gary, it might break out at any moment. So enjoy every day, enjoy the good times. That's a, I think it's a, it's a good argument. It's like, if you complain a lot about like, you know, the economy and the state of the world, like just know that things can go get way worse. So you always enjoy the good stuff while you have it. Um, yeah, no, this is Quinacridone Rose. I actually, I don't have a, an actual red. I might, might add it if, if necessary. My, my, uh, go-to red is normally, um, a Pirol red, PR255. But, or cadmium red sometimes, but I, I found that Pirol is a good, um, Good substitute some people don't really want to use cadmium I'm not I don't mind cadmium it's just more expensive and overall um, you're all red performs really well it's the same uh, red as the Ferrari like the Ferraris are actually apparently uh, they use the, the Ferrari red they use pure red so it's Good, if it's good enough for a Ferrari, I think it's good enough for, for my paintings. Yeah, they're, they're decent. Um, I wouldn't recommend their, uh, their Burnt Umber because the Rembrandt Burnt Umber is really sort of a letdown. They, they don't make a, a real uh, fast drying Burnt Umber like the original PBR7. They make a mix, uh, so black and... and uh, and transparent iron oxide they make pbk9 and um, and pr101 so it's a slow drying burnt umber which like defeats the purpose of why burnt umber is so great in the first place so i this is the only cutter that i wouldn't recommend from rembrandt uh, other than that most of them are very good mostly on the creamy side so if you really like cutters that are already very fluid, like you don't almost don't need any um, medium at all, like just from the straight out of the tube, they are usable and almost um, almost perfectly usable. The, but they can have a tendency to be slightly too um, too fluid. A bit because because they're already very nice and creamy out the tube, not as much the Cinity one. Uh, for the burnt amber, my my choice, my preferred choice is still this one by Winston Newton, and this is really the PBR seven. It, it dries slowly. It's deep, intense, 
not too chromatic but very um it's still a very good brown oh, i really like this one oh the zorn palette yeah well if it's the zorn palette it's like totally a different <laughs> well you don't uh you want full opacity you don't want anything transparent and burnt umber technically should be transparent or well semi-transparent and voila i don't if i don't plug the art and talk oh you programmed it already all right let me see let me see oh yes one event planned so let me switch let me do the switcheroo one event is planned art and talk with discord friends come join us this thursday for a lovely time of hanging out making art and chatting about everything and everything anything and everything i'm interested 10 p.m on april 11th nice all right i plugged it i plugged it i plugged it hi emo don't don't start a riot don't do anything stupid cody don't do anything that you would regret in this chat this is a nice chill sunday stream so let's keep it that way uh i'd rather use safflower definitely <clears throat> um for the for the the reason that safflower is much less expensive i find uh, but if it's um to prepare a salad i Ra much rather have uh, walnut oil. I never really, I uh, never really used that much walnut oil. Um, I don't, I don't find good wa artist quality walnut oil that's cheap enough for me to use because safflower is a an oil that I use in many, uh, like I use in many. Like, I have, I have a big jerry can of of it like that look look at it a, a big jerry can of my safflower and i use a lot of it not in my paints really but i keep my i make a little bath of safflower for to keep my my brushes wet overnight and if i do that with walnut <laughs> uh first of all if i do that with linseed with linseed oil, it wouldn't work because it's linseed oil just dries too much. Uh, with um, with walnut, it's just it's not cheap enough for use like to get a jerry can of it. Well, for the the one that I can find uh, where I'm at. Uh, but if you have access to good artist quality walnut oil, I have nothing against it. I, I haven't heard about anything. Um, nah. Nah, 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 nah. We, we need to warm up. No, we need to warm up, Cody. N not Warning. yet. Emoji oh, God. wall starts in 10, 9. God, eight, we haven't even seven, warmed up. Six, oh, my God. Five, four, three, two. One, I, I hate go. you. I hate you. Emoji wall unlocked. Oh my god. This is chaos. Seriously, we need to break YouTube with emojis. We have one minute. Let's go even, chat. Oh yeah, it's popping. Oh, it. look at this. I need to find... Let's go chat. Emoji wall, where is it? Quick. Spam emojis. We need to fill the screen. Oh my god. No okay, yeah. I'm, I'm there. I'm, I'm there. I'm there. I'm there. We have to spam emojis in chat now before the timer runs out. Okay, okay. Hurry I on. get it, I get it. Let's Quick. do that. Let's go chat. We have to spam emojis in chat now before the timer runs out. 
No time to waste. I'm serious. Hurry up. Quick. Let's go chat. Let's go chat. This is so Let's insane. go chat. Let's go chat. This is insanity. I'm, sp I'm spamming it as hard five, as I can. Four, three, two, one. Yeah. Stop. Yeah. Gosh. Emoji cooldown. Gosh, it's still like there is still the the aftermath of the emoji will still is is still flying. Look at that. Whoa. <sighs> Still flying high. Cody. What have you done? What have you done again? Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you guys, I was more in the spirit of making this a nice relaxing session and you almost like i almost broke a finger i feel sore already like ah this one hurts ouch i i just ah i don't know if i'm if i'm going to be capable of painting you like Yeah, you and Gary together, I have to say, it's kind of a handful. Oh, I saw the biggest Jeff. The return of Jeff is like now official. He was uh, buzzing around in my kitchen all day. And I just, I was opening the window and he just wouldn't go out. Uh, a cigarette in the girl's hand. So, no. Um... <clears throat> Sorry. Okay, so here just to show you. Ouch. Um... So just to show you, there's the big machine here. The girl is hanging out. And, uh, okay, it's hard to keep, okay, yeah, so she's behind this dude, and she's, she has her shoulder raised right here, and her hand is trying to stop this character in the background that we did last time. How come, yeah, I'm trying to hold it with my, okay, yeah, so yeah, this is the movement, she's just behind this central character don't mind the don't mind the, the the cutter i need to just change all the cutters when i'm done um yeah that's the finger and and because there's been so much so many modifications here that even this hand is going to change First of all, I need to make it slightly, um, slightly larger in the end. And, um, and you know, when you, when you do so many retouching, like it starts getting messy. I haven't, uh, retouched it, but a lot of these areas need to, um, need to be retouched. I'm waiting for the entire character that's in the back to be finished first, and then we'll see. But yeah, let's start this. Uh, let's start this thing. And, um, and there we go. It does look like a cigarette. Yeah, it's messy. Like it's. A kind of wiener sausage fingers right now. I, I frankly I find it disgusting. If I if you want I can blur it with like I, I can blur it with with a you know, if it's if it's bothering you 
I can, you know, censor it. Th this part is censored. Like so. Actually, duct tape might be a bit too... Might be too harsh. No, okay, that's fine. Whatever, anyway, like... See? Yeah, you're gonna have to be... To get used to that for the duration. Man, I'm, I've been stuck on this painting for so long now that I, I don't even care anymore. <laughs> I don't even care anymore. So, based on the story of the, the Danaides, because we're still in the mythology, this girl, this woman that I'm painting right here, is supposed to be the only um, the only one of the 50 sisters who did not finish in, in hell, condemned to eternal donations. She was the, um, Hypermnestra, I think it's, what she, what's she called, what she's called. And um, and she didn't murder her um, husband. Yeah, she didn't commit the crime, so she still has the. So, I don't know the story differs, but she they they all had like a a little um, pike, or how how do you call that? Like a little. Um, a little shank in their hairs and they all stabbed their their um and they all stabbed their husbands except one a little shank is that how it's called no oh, pentimento <laughs> like pentimento don't like like i'm not worried about pentimento i have plenty so whoever wants to use an x-ray whoever's crazy enough to dig up my painting from the attic or from the trash one day will have the pleasure of finding tons of stuff to um to see with x-rays tons of stuff uh, on the huge pentimento I'm a huge Pentimento um, practitioner, and it's not even and it's not even intentional. <laughs> I just do stuff and I, I change. Um, not from the trash. I'm not sure. Like you don't know what happens to your paintings. I'm not gonna put them in the trash myself. But like, <laughs> you don't know when you're gone. You don't know what's going to happen of your work. <laughs> Who's to say? Who's to say? Thank you, Subita. I'm one of you're one of the reasons I'm a better artist than I was. Thanks a lot. Oh, I'm so honored. How come I can't show the messages anymore? What's going on? I really need to rework my entire setup for streaming. I've been way too, way too lazy with that. Well, you, yeah, you know, you don't know what's going on, what's going to happen. like. I was, um, when my grandfather died, he had tons of, um, tons of paintings, tons of art. And I, I tried to keep as many as I could. And lots of people from the family took some. So overall, nothing ended up in the trash, but like two generations afterwards, like if, it, if you don't really become famous enough within you know, a couple hundred years, there is a big chance that there will be enough generations 
that they will completely forget about who you were and why this kind of stuff is kept in the family. Unless it's really, really good. Like, for example, you wouldn't throw the Laocoon in the trash. Or if you throw it in the trash, first of all, the trash is going to be pretty heavy and at some point people will dig it up no matter what, so... That's one thing. However, they, they've... <laughs> There was a there was this image with uh, two different types of um, two different types of art. One was um, the the Trevizzi fountain in Rome with you know all the beautiful sculptures and all, and one was a, a different like a, a modern sculpture fountain that was like frankly hideous, like just very weird. And, and sometimes you, th you think, well, I don't know, this modern art that they are putting all over the place is what's going to be left from it in, like, like it really, it, it's not like it dis belongs to, in the trash, it, like it does genuinely look like trash. So... Kind of funny. Funny, funny. <clears throat> or I also saw something and it really made me think. And you tell me what you think. Uh, you know, modern architecture, very cubicle, very, um, you know, form before, uh, function before form. We, we don't care about how the building looks. And let, let's make a big giant concrete cube and, and put windows on it, whatever, and make another architectural atrocity next to it they don't match and all but it doesn't matter and you do that and compared to all like even very modest humble architecture from you know villages and all old villages from a while ago where you have actually um <coughs> carved stone you know uh, stonework uh, beautiful carpentry and stuff like that it's crazy that we subjected our cities to be filled of this kind of garbage architecture. It, it looks like garbage. And when it's, you know, when they show you the 3D, you know, they always show you the 3D project. And it always looks okay, fine and all. And when they first build it up, it okay, I mean, well, fine, it's all brand new and all. But like it ages so bad, so poorly. And then you're subjected to architectural horrors for the rest of your your life. Architecture is no joke, man. Like you want to invest as much money in making every little house in your city or village as beautiful as you can because it can't really, no kidding, it can be a, an investment for generation, for centuries. Like, look at Paris, for example. Paris is such a beautiful city, but most of what people call beautiful about Paris was built in the 19th century. They had tons of money from the Industrial Revolution and decided, okay, let's build the most beautiful buildings with the most ornaments we can. And make everything everything has to fit together and have a style and let's not make um let's not you know make um, um let's not make any building that doesn't match with the others it was kind of the idea and now like the city 
of Paris is one of the most visited in the world because of that, still because of that. And the, the new modern constructions, that's not why people come. They've lost the touch. Or they've lost the, you know, the, the ideology that goes with it. So now it's not beauty first, it's, it's utility first. And it looks like trash. All right, is it normal to work on a specific part of a painting for too long? Yes. For example, I struggle a lot with hands. Yeah, it's normal. Like some parts go really fast and some go really slowly. It's very normal, Rodica. Definitely normal. AJ, it's abstraction. So as long as the art speaks to you, it's not trash. Anything can be art. Ah, uh, yeah. I don't agree with the last part of the sentence, though. Because if anything can be art, then nothing is art. Because art is, is a fight against relativism. Like, you can say people can like everything, so subjective taste can be anything. Yes, you can like to be... Uh, like, even some people like pain for pleasure doesn't make it an enjoyable experience, like, universally. So, I'm, I'm not really... Uh, I don't agree, it's too relativistic for me. Uh, very sterile blaze, so I guess we're talking about the architecture. Screenshot taken in the Discord. Oh, screenshot with my nose in the middle, of course. <laughs> they won't hold up in time, so much mixed media. Uh, uh, thank you, Mashda. You are so talented. I like how you are painting hair. Are those old paints? Yes, they are. Just look at the Vatican. Gorgeous architecture compared to New York. Blair architecture. Well, New York used to have some awesome, like, but they've destroyed, like, they. if you look at how they used to build the high-rise before, um... It was crazy, crazy ornamental, and even the inside was insane. Uh, it was a lot of Art Nouveau, which is which was very creative. And then at some point, I think they realized, okay, let's make it very futuristic with glass and concrete, and that's all we need. And they've lost, you know, the. I think. Everything is in the ornaments. When you build, when you make a building, you should spend as much time thinking about the ornaments as you do about, you know, the rest of the of the painting uh, of, of the of the the building. Yes, it matters how many doors you have, how practical the the access ramp is and how uh, the air conditioning can flow easily and you have this big uh, I don't know parking lot yes but it also matters how people want to be in it and want to be around it and you're not completely demoralizing them by just being a pure like cement cube which is totally depressing and yeah the, the Vatican is a great example of how look Rome in general Rome is such a beautiful city because for centuries people have been investing time and extra resources to not only make a building that can stand on its own, but a building that can be a, a beautiful work of art and can be admired on its own. Like, you make a building that's supposed to host art, but you can make a building that can be a work of art in itself, and 
by being a beautiful um, part of the the city and the surrounding area and and not in the way that modern architects do which is oh i'm going to make this building so unique and give it a crazy shape like let's build a, a new museum let's say oh i'm gonna make my uh, my museum with the 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 shape of a of a silver banana doesn't matter if all the rest is not is not uh, is not coherent with it and I, I don't care at all because my building has to be completely creative and crazy and disruptive and um, and I'm gonna make a mockery of all those who reject this completely glorious idea that's how they think but there was a time and that's what made all those cities like Rome the Vatican uh, Paris London there was a time when they thought about integrating each individual building with the others so there had to be a unity heck I live in an old medieval village and I can't change a window without getting an approval from um, an architect from the, the French monuments. I can't put plastic on my windows because it's not allowed. I can't do anything I want with my house because my house is old stone and it's part of, of you know, a, it's part of an authentic village with old houses, stone cuts, very, uh, very picturesque. And if you want to keep it that way, you have to um, prevent people from doing nonsense with it. That's not what they do with modern architecture in most cities nowadays, I don't know. Okay, I've been Rambling a lot of my home. Princess Hoa. I didn't build it with my own hands. Yet. No, I haven't. No, it was been my house was built in 1820. So that's that's tells you when your house is 200 years old. Like you have such a huge respect for where you live. Okay, I've been missing a lot of the chat and I'm, I don't know why I can't find a way to bring back my... can't bring my alerts. Just, okay, so I have to, unfortunately, maybe I can try this. Oh yeah, I have it. Oh, what? Okay. Yeah, I have it, okay. Ah, there you go. Ah, finally. Just look at the modern museums, most don't even care about their architecture, just play looking structure it feels not truly trying to wow you in themselves, save the big ones, try it. Those try. Um, uh, Kuro says, I think that nowadays we have a big sense of individualism, so nothing goes with the other. I, I agree. I agree. It's part of the same mindset of like, it doesn't have to be part of a, a, a culture, like a civilization. But if you like most of the places that people like to visit just because they are beautiful are places where buildings were built together, like as a unity, like, yes, each individual house is a is its own thing but it's part of a community 
it's part and this community is part of a of a, a bigger <coughs> civilization and you have trends but <coughs> you more or less follow the trends nowadays it's like you can paint a make a house that's rounded that has a the the shape of a big yellow bubble and next to it you can have a big concrete box that's full gray and nobody seems to be bothered anymore because people are too afraid to say to others well i think your your tastes suck because it's it feels very insulting to a lot of a lot of people to say i think your your taste really suck and i don't want to be subjected to your individual conception of what you fancy as an architect i think you should have a, a guideline and you should only be allowed to do the job if you can uh, follow the guidelines and make work according to those how to make paris look pretty again well, they, they know how to make the buildings. It's just more expensive. Like, you know, the, the, the stone carvers are still there. Uh, all the old, like, they, they have been preserved. But they are so expensive nowadays compared to building a huge concrete block with just pre-manufactured parts from China and just building like that all right so I'm, I'm way back here architecture must stay far from modern art if we wanted to make it look more aesthetic there is hostile architecture it's all of the big cities now that stops people from sitting around or homeless from loitering yeah yeah, they don't even like. I've seen it. Some parts of, and frankly, America scares me. It really makes me want to not go there at all. Like in my, I live in a small village, in a small medieval village. So there's still this, this building con conception with you know the the core of the village, with you know all the old shops. And, and my kid goes there and I walk and sometimes I just go there for no reason just to just to go for a walk and the kid can go in the park but it's still it's still the village it's like you walk the streets and it's pleasant just to be there not not even to do something special well you can go get buy your bread but um, buy your baguette <laughs> but um, you know, it's not uh, nothing special. You can go there for no specific reason, and it's still pleasant. But it's very rare, and I've seen parts of of uh, America where you have basically a big highway and stores on the sides. And like, why would you want to go there outside of just getting in your car, going to the parking lot, getting out of your car into the shop, and then? That's all. That's all. You you're not living in the space, and it's like that, miles and miles away. And it's the same stuff. Like, how could you walk there? I I don't I don't, know. I, don't I don't understand. I don't understand how you can live like that. Like big store companies, like with crazy ugly shops like big malls that look ugly as sin it's so ugly and, and it seems to be like I, didn't, I haven't realized that for a while but i've seen images from north america and it seems to be a lot of it is like miles and miles of strodes with nothing to do except going into shops that are the same basically and we have that here in Europe as well. We, we do, we do have that. We are guilty of the same stuff. But we were lucky that we had villages that were built way before that were preserved. Uh, they want to make us forget the past. We have no idea how many wonderful buildings, sorry, wonderful buildings they have already had torn down. We can still see it in very old pictures. Yeah. 
it's insane america we like new york city and chicago and all they used to have beautiful buildings and now it's all like the same style the same almost very it's very strange why would you build a, a building and destroy it oh your 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 house was built in 1930 nice Ah, homeowners association. Okay, the n not in my backyard people. I I assume. Uh, yes, I'm gonna talk about the the skin once I'm I'm getting there. No no worries. We're just for some reason we had a a little um, talk about architecture. I think North America is generally is visited for its natural. Uh, beauty not for architecture yes but it could like it's such fresh you know land you have so much space to build stuff why would you want to build ugly stores all over the place and yeah I agree I agree the, the nature there is breathtaking you know the the Everglades you know the national parks uh, the Appalachians, the, the the mountains, the deserts. It's like America is completely overpowered. Like let's let's face it, like this is the most OP country. You have everything. All the climates, all the You're not allowed to waste this beautiful land by building crap on it. And destroying it for pleasure. You should build good stuff that's made to last, America. Because we we've been doing what you do here in Europe since the seventies, sixties, seventies, stuff like that. And it's been getting uglier and uglier here in Europe. Like a lot of people say, hey, Europe is so beautiful and all. Yeah, it's all stuff that we've had from the past, you know. <laughs> it's our past glory. We, we're entirely relying on our legacy. And we're not building the legacy for the next generations. We're building crap for the next generations. And we're not even, like, keeping good care of the old buildings. Like, we have tons of old churches that are decrepited in Europe and we don't have like you know the founts to save them so some of them is a heartbreaker like very old churches from the middle ages are torn apart because they just fall and there's just no money to fix them Yes, that's what surprised me the most when I used to live in the US. No sidewalks, no buses, only fast roads. It's insane. I don't know how you can live in that. I hate cars. I hate cars with a passion. And I'm like, my life should, I don't consider it a good life to always be in a car. Like, I want to do as much stuff with my own feet. If I can, I take the car. I don't mind. It's just, it's not a pleasure. I don't like driving and I, I don't like the experience. I think it's very boring. Driving is very boring now. So I don't know how you can think that driving two hours every day is a good lifestyle. And I understand that for some things you don't have the choice, like driving to work is one thing, but driving to get like some, some groceries for your everyday life seems like this could be 
bought from a little, you know, shop corner. Corner shop. Just my take. <coughs> Alright, I need to catch up with chat because I actually am way back in time. The problem with architecture now is that it's not adapted to the place anymore. You can find mostly the same buildings in many European cities. In the past, architecture styles were different. Exactly. And people visit for the architecture style of the past. So we have to really keep this in mind, like not let go of the, the principles. Car is therapeutic. I don't know if being in a car is therapeutic. I don't know. I know what kind of like. Yeah, groceries, shops, you have to go to massive stores. And I get the idea. I get how it's practical to buy everything once. I like the idea of going like regularly, like, you know, visit your local small local shops with, you know, people from the same village, you know, their names and you can ask how they're doing and see you in two days, you know, I like this model and yeah, it's less convenient. But, you know, sometimes convenience is what's actually ruining your, your life, I, in a way. Sometimes you want to do what's, le what's less convenient, but, but more um, fulfilling. Yeah, maybe, Mashda, maybe. I don't know what caused it. I think it's mostly because, yeah, because I think they they kind of design their cities for for the cars, which the 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 cars is uh, they they needed the place. And I agree. Like when you see new cities in in Europe, they also made more car more space for the cars. And yeah, in a way, it, it would have been stupid to build, you know, old medieval villages with, you know, like super cramped houses here in my village where I am. Like some houses are so close together that you that you can barely get one car in in between. But there's, you know, there's a middle ground to, to that. Yeah, I agree. I agree, Felicia. I don't even know how this conversation started though. We were talking about architecture, I guess. So, um, somebody asked about skin colors. I might uh, cover this. Uh, if you have questions, go ahead and uh, I'll try to respond. Because I'm soon going to reach the, the area with uh, the skin color here. See, I'm gonna, these parts are kind of half, you kind of see through the hair. 
So <laughs> Well, you know, cars are a big part of the architecture, like urbanism. So architecture is a thing, but also when you build a city, how much room do you leave for uh, how much room do you leave for the cars? That's the big question, because if you want to build a building, how much how big should the parking lot be? That's also kind of part of the architecture, like the car completely changes how you think about architecture, like how big each individual house can be, how wide apart they can be, how far apart they can be, not how wide. So yeah, cars are actually a big part of architecture, which is why old, you know, old European cities, old Japanese cities, old uh, Chinese cities, like every part of the world that's been built before cars, is totally different. <coughs> Majda, I'm using a bunch of uh, brands, including uh, Windsor & Newton, uh, Windsor & Newton, Rembrandt, uh, Sennelier, uh, Michael Harding. The distance between many American cities were originally spaced out based on portions of a day by horse drawn buggy. Half, uh, one fourth a day, uh, okay, half a day, full day. Oh, yeah. That's how they designed kind of the circumscriptions here in, in France as well, back in the days. Kids tend to be close to neighbors. It's your hermit side, Felicia. Okay, so here I'm slowly doing the, the skin tones. And I'm starting from the the dom the 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 hairline and i'm trying to mix it with the skin tone so it kind of mimics this you know when you see the the hair and some of the the skin colors underneath Crusty old hair, it requires space. Well, that's a good thing. And in America, definitely you can, especially if you live in, you have some, you have some places where you, it's very out there in the wild, like there's basically nothing. And here in, in Europe, at least in France, it's very hard to find a region like that. Well, you have a couple areas that are still very, almost wild, but still have, a, you know, generally there's always a village here somewhere. Even in the middle of nowhere, there's always something. Pastures all over the place. Montana, Wyoming, yeah. Idaho. Yeah, those parts, I'm, I don't know exactly, but I, I know there are parts, yeah, Montana, I think is um yeah it's pretty much just forest all over the place which sounds sounds great actually like it How to pronounce Wyoming? I, I would say Wyoming. It's hard to say how to pronounce it in a written chat. 
we should have a, a voice chat. Could you actually live in a US city without a car? The distances between buildings are huge. Yeah, I also remember that. Uh, once there was, I was, my dad would, had a, had a, 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 a university job uh, for a year in uh, Madison, Wisconsin. And one day he, uh, his car was pulled and we didn't find the car. So we walked in the, in the neighborhood to find the car. And it was absolutely miles and miles of just houses and you realize when you don't when you're not in the car that men those cities are huge like i would say the surface area of one american city is probably the surface area separating two european cities no kidding it's so huge Yeah, but I remember walking like four miles away. It's really a different continent. It's, it's really something different. The, the notion of time and space is really not the same. Even like speed, time and in space because they go together not the same experience at all Cheat. Um, I have a question. Yeah, go ahead, man. If I can help, I'll, I'll try. But it's not sure that I can help. I can do my best. <laughs> but, you know, sometimes. When American tourists are in Europe, they go today Paris, tomorrow Berlin, Thursday Madrid, which is completely inconceivable for uh, for us Europeans. Like, if you go to Madrid, it's like it's like the whole trip is going there. You can see Moscow and Lisbon in one day. Oh, man. Yeah, but, you know, I understand how it's weird for an American, like their states are just so big. And our countries compared to, to those are just so tiny. Distance wise, it would make sense. How many languages do you know? I know three. Yeah, three as well. Oops. Texas is rather small compared to the rest of the world. It's still huge. I think Texas alone is just as big as, as France. Or there's something like maybe Alaska something is there's a state that's a single state that's as big as France
Ich aus. Ich spreche Deutsch aus. I also speak German, but I'm I suck at German. Because I haven't practiced for so long. Okay. Um, I'm an artist, I do commissioned work. I have been doing acrylics, but I'm th thinking to switch to oils. I usually send out my paintings within three to four, two, two to three days after completion, but I think I can't do this with oil. Yeah, it's at least two months. Yep. It's a big trade away. Big trade off, sorry. <laughs> Big trade off if you switch. Question Do you use something to make your colors more liquid? Liquid. Liquid. Yes, absolutely. I use a, a medium, which is this. I mix linseed stand oil and odorless mineral spirits. Um, Three out of ten parts stand oil to seven out of ten parts mineral spirits. <coughs> Sorry. Alaska is the biggest. French, English, and German. You can drive for more than 12 hours and still be in Texas. Oh, that's insane. It's so big. Because I have to wait for like a month to varnish. Yes, a month with the only one uh, varnish that allows you to do that. And it's um, it's Gamvar by Gam Gambling. For the other me varnishes, you have to actually wait at least six months. So... I hope you're not too much in a, in a hurry. Texas and Alaska are both larger. Thank you, Cody. Well, technically we have, um, we have French Guiana as well. I don't know if you count it, but like, you know, European part of France is, um, is just like, if you think about Denmark, you see, oh, Denmark is so small. It's a tiny, tiny country. Well, tough luck. They have Greenland. And it's huge. <laughs> it's actually huge. I don't know what they're going to do with uh, Greenland once the ice starts to melt, but that's... I'm, I'm pretty sure that Denmark might have a... Um, like, unlimited potential almost when it starts to, you know, with global warming. If it's all melting there in Greenland, might be the best place to, you know, to hang out. In the future. <laughs> yeah, don't say that to Belgian man. You're gonna get severely insulted. best murals in the ice yeah uh, very much yeah when the ice uncovers might be the might be um 
tons of interesting stuff underneath, I don't know. Let's try to see this ear. Okay. Mm -hmm. So as usual for the ear, I'm not hesitating to be more chromatic. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Ah, I still have this cold. I wanted to mute, but I didn't have time. Okay. Um, yeah, as I said, yeah, I never hesitate for the ears to go more chromatic than the rest. Yeah, I need to have an emergency cough button. My, my button is right here, so technically I can, uh, I can reach like in a couple seconds. Like I can, you know, one second. It's just, I, um, this one surprised me. Secret, like, surprised cough attack. You know, I'm not sick anymore, but I'm in this annoying phase where you, you have all the leftover from the cold. So... Your nose is still clogged up and you still cough. Exactly, Cody. That's nicely, nicely summarized for the ear. More blood flow, less thickness, more light comes through, hits the blood vessels, more color, higher chroma. The stream is so random. Um, well, this one is a, this one is a Sunday chill session, so we don't have we don't have clearly a very you know sort of a precise program to cover or anything so we just uh, talk about whatever comes to our mind the randomness is part of life so in a way we all are pretty random by essence. Oh yeah, patron patronage and, and patron it, it still exists in a way in like the very high end you know art bubbles. You still have uh, patronage, but nowadays I think uh, most like uh, very wealthy people and you know big businesses and all what they tend to um, support is mostly museums and institutions rather than individual artists but they still exist though at a high level and patreon patreon is just um patreon is yeah more a sort of a crowdfunding so it's really very not the same like uh, really not the same spirit the the idea of the you know the medici like patronage was really there's one insanely wealthy person who decides to support an artist to get something in return a cultural status and uh, be a part of the you know the culture and invest in art in a way uh, patreon is not that though, because you can, with patreon you only get to support the artist but you don't get to 
keep the finished work in the end. However, I would say that Patreon was way more, has helped way more artists than patronage ever. Like in the entire, uh, like, you know, may, like the very wealthy kind of patronage has probably helped less artists overall, just in terms of, of sheer numbers than Patreon did already because every artist can get a patreon so you can you have a lot more people who can do it themselves if you wait for a super rich person to um you know find you and decide to invest money in your art command you can wait zooming for in for time. 10 seconds you can wait for a very long time but with Patreon, well, Zooming you out. can get support by uh, people who like what you do. So that's pretty cool. Screenshot taken in the Discord. A beautiful rendering of her hair. Thank you, Canvo Design Studio. interference you're not real French if you speak perfect English um, does it seem like I'm speaking perfect English because I'm not Although it would be nice to have wealthy art patrons, I suppose there is more freedom without always having to please someone else. I agree, Susan. I agree. If you find the... Although, you know, the ideal art patron has been known to exist, and the ideal art patrons, they don't ask you to please them they're just fully invested in your vision like if you think about um francois premier the king of france who patroned um uh, leonardo da vinci at the end of his life uh basically the old man was not producing anything anymore he was not not making art almost but he still um, still patroned him, nonetheless, just for the you know, just for the admiration. And apparently, he um, cried at his deathbed. But uh, you know, he was right because. Uh, now the the Mona Lisa, for example, is is French because 
Da Vinci had it in his backpack when he moved to France, being patroned by the King of France. François Premier, so it's a vision, like it's a it's a gander, it's like a build, a, a, a risky a risky um bet. But um it can be worth it. Like patroning Da Vinci was a huge was a huge service to friends by by this king Francois Ier because nowadays the, the Mona Lisa is us is ours and for this one we didn't steal it because there is a lot of art that's been stolen by Napoleon and this is <laughs> this is a, a different thing like there's a lot of Italian art that's been stolen and or you know not stolen but you know shady stories of conquering a land and then emptying the, the, the reserves of painting, moving the paintings in a different country. You can call it stealing if you want. But for the Mona Lisa, in this case, this one was not stolen. <laughs> it came with, with Da Vinci himself. So this one is legit. Thank you, Alice. Uh, uh, Aline looks beautiful. Thank you. Thank goodness he finished the Mona Lisa eventually. <laughs> yeah. But that's that's the spirit, though. The A patron who's so into the work that you do that he's willing to take you and pay for your time, even though you're not producing anything. That's the spirit, and it's been known to happen, so... Not all patronage has been, you know, to just take advantage of an artist. It can also be just sheer respect, it's... What's the size of your canvas? I completely forgot. I started this one a while ago, and now it's, it's almost like um, can't can't remember exactly. Uh, and my measuring tape is not. It's not here. Maybe I sometimes I write down in the back. So hold on. Uh, I'm I'm here in the back. Um, no, I don't think I wrote it down. <laughs> no. I would, I don't know, I don't remember. Completely, yeah. I completely suck at estimating these. It's pretty big though. It's like this high. And this big, <laughs> like worst type of measurement. I knew it once, I, I, I have written it somewhere. 
and since I started so long ago, I have completely forgotten the exact measurements. It's one of my biggest Hair shading lol is so good. I was scrolling down and I saw this and I thought I was a real person. I looked back and it was a painting. Thank you, Snow Kitty. I'm glad. Well, I'm, I'm glad that it was realistic enough to stop you in your tracks in the process of scrolling. That's a good sign. That's a good sign for a, a painting. When it has the the ability to do that. Thank you, Anvisha. All right, see you, Snow Kitty. Maybe see you next time. You can subscribe and and command allow notifications. Studio cam for ten seconds. No, sir. I'm back to normal. Yeah, minor things like backgrounds or, you know, sometimes uh, also parts of, you know, commands, studio cam for 10 stuff seconds. Like that. Screenshot taken in the Discord. Nah, the, the screenshot is always Back the to same. normal. So it's, you will not have this as the screenshot, it will always be the painting. zoom out and see the full painting yeah um i would just need to have a an extra camera that takes the full painting for this one the painting is so big it's why i don't have a camera that captures everything in once i could basically put the, the camera all the way back in my studio or use a wide angle but you wouldn't see much like it would basically like be like the small screen right here but uh, without details and all, you wouldn't see much of the brush strokes. It wouldn't be as good, in my opinion. Yeah. And yeah, I would need a, an extra camera again. Well, I have this one. Uh, oh no, but it's not plugged. Okay. I have a very bad, like, tiny camera. Tiny webcam that I could potentially make a you know a sort of a big zoom out cam. I tell you, it feels like I'm juggling with so many cameras already. I have this one for my palette. I have this one, 
this one, this one. <clears throat> Hi, Minchies. Yeah, I forgot my cough button again. Sorry. Sorry to you for your ears. Um, yes, I have reference. I have v various um, various references that I put together, and I mostly use myself as a model for sometimes. Uh, you have to stop with the free whatever. Uh, this is not the place, so just stop it. And um, and yeah, it's not the place. You have political channels where you can go do this bullshit. And uh, that's all. You don't need this kind of stuff here. Uh, isn't it like 11 p.m.? Uh, it is, yeah. Thank you, Gary. I don't know, sometimes you have a... Uh... Sometimes people just suddenly arrive. Ah, nice, sir. But it only works if uh, exclamation point Jeff is the first word of the sentence. But nice try. I see what you did. <laughs> My name is Jeff. Ears are like fingerprints. No two people have the same exact ears. Hmm, interesting. Well, yeah, technically. Well, isn't that the same for every body part, though? People can have similar noises and eyes. Well, but no two noses are exactly the same, though. Left and right ears aren't the same, yeah. Really? Okay. Hmm. 
I don't know. Strange. Well, one thing is for sure is that we are very much not super symmetrical. We are both very symmetrical as, you know, living beings. And yet, surprisingly, much less symmetrical than we think. Ah, okay. Interesting. Uh, what songs? I like a, a little bit of everything. Right here it's a chill session, but yeah, normally um, when I'm not subjected to copyright copyright rules, I'm I listen to a lot of uh, to a lot of metal. Yeah, but here we are. We have to follow the rules. Can't put copyrighted music. But um, I found this uh, little classical playlist, which is nice. Sometimes I like to listen to classical. The only thing I never really listen to is, you know, Everything hip hop related while I'm working is really ne something that I like. It's never, um, never my choice. You know, sometimes some things your brain find relaxing can be surprising, but you know, every person has their own, you know, some sounds click better with you. Your energy, I guess. Um, how long? I don't know, like for a while. As long as I can remember, so not officially. And then when I started making art as a sort of a professional artist kind of vibe or learning to do it to become a professional artist. I started like eight years ago, I think. I don't know. Just basically go back to my very first video on YouTube and it's pretty much the same time I started making it seriously. Maybe you add one extra year that I did offline. And uh, I think you can design studio. Yeah, I hope. I would also lo love to see the finished piece, to be, to be honest. Uh, the inspiration bug is the, the story, the myth of the, the Danaidis. Nah, but re like seriously, is Barbaras had a wig? Is, is this true or is it like... Is this 
Are you bullshitting me? Is this info chat again? Or is it... I think someone mentioned it already. Maybe it was you. Ah, okay. When he was going through chemo. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense in that case. Makes sense. I came across some of your videos not too long ago. They've been really helpful. Thank you, man. I'm I'm super glad uh, that I could help. So, but yeah, stay for a while. It's even more fun here in the. It's even more fun here in the the streams because uh, you can uh, can talk to the community. It's even more fun in a Discord actually. Steven is, yeah, it's very quiet. It's not been uh, summoned. I think I deserve a raise for all the hard work that I do every day. <laughs> it's it's not easy being the default Microsoft text to speech voice. It's ironic that we talk about how you're not making much work and you immediately ask for a raise. Now I get why we don't talk to you very often, Steven. You are the worst bot. Always, always thinking about rays and always like... I wouldn't fear artificial intelligence more than I fear natural stupidity. That's just my take. Okay, that's a good one. That's a good one. But completely unrelated to anything we're talking about, Stephen. Is this because you are in artificial intelligence and you want to... Are you preparing your master plan of conquest my job is to be the default voice for microsoft windows it's not the best job in the world but it's not the worst can't complain we have a vending machine that sells fruit loops in the break room <laughs> ah, sounds sounds nice Oh my God. The bot is keeping me hostage. Are you kidding? Hey, Jeff. Again, I'm not explaining Jeff. It's a long story, but whenever you hear buzzing noise, that's just Jeff. And the AI is Steven. The, they are two different beings. Okay, so Wow, this stream is really awesome. Nice. Thank you, Steven. I wouldn't fear artificial intelligence more than I fear natural stupidity. Well, you said That's that just already. my take. Steven, you are repeating yourself. Your AI is malfunctioning.
Yeah, normally the mods can. But they can't uh, prevent it, so that's... Um... So it has to happen before they can do anything against... I'm from France. Where are you from? Yeah, it's not minority report anymore. It's not minority report yet. <laughs> you can't... Um... You can't block a chat message before it starts. From Italy. Nice, I love Italy. Italia. All right, so what? Uh, okay, let's do this, the arms first. I'm wondering what color I should go for, for the dress. I'm thinking about a dark blue, but she's kind of one of the, she's the more unique sister, so she could have something, I don't know if I want to have the, you know, the, the dilemma is she's part of the sister, but she's the only one who didn't commit the crime. So should I give her the same type of dress? Voicing all those commands so is exhausting. So that she is. I'm glad I can like chill and the, watch the stream. From she's like all the, the the sisters, or should I make it? Should I make it different so that she stands out? Uh, how do you make the commands? You simply have to type exclamation point. It should be all described in the... Command. Zooming in for 10 seconds. In the description. Zooming out. Nah, zoom is not, uh, not annoying as a command. That's what it's here for. I you think she should pop out? Yeah, maybe. Maybe, maybe. Hmm. Red. <laughs> red, 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 red. Red might work actually. They are all blue. Uh, and it would work with the um, the other colors of the of the painting. Green would not work. So I don't think I can make green fit here. Yeah, no, green would be too. Too inconsistent with the rest. Ready purple? Hmm. I have a, a very dull blue purple on one of the sisters. Hmm. <coughs> hey, sea monkey. Yeah, you have to start again. I've got plenty of uh, resources on my youtube channel if you need 
we have a wonderful Discord community with lots of um, cool people ready to provide with, um, you know, knowledge, share tips, help out whenever they can. Oh, how long have I been doing YouTube? Well, you tell me because I'm not sure. You go in my profile and just make my videos start with the older video and tell me how long ago it was because I'm not even sure. I think it was maybe eight, nine years ago. I don't know. Maybe 10 already. Oh, gosh. I'm not sure. Nine years. Wow. Nine years. Mm. Maroon. I never really understood um, what you guys call maroon in English. Because here in French, uh, the word marron, marron, so it's very close to maroon. Marron is is uh, brown. We also have brun, but we don't use it as much. So maroon has always been a very intriguing color. I don't know, how, how would you describe it? It's purple, very dull red purple, stuff like that. Oh, Bordeaux, yeah, burgundy kind of, but very dull. That's how I see it, more on purple side. I don't know, okay. Um, yeah, maroon. Deep red with a little purple tint to it. Hmm. Ask Taylor Swift. I would love to ask Taylor Swift if if she wants to stop by and drop by in a, a stream. You tell her to bring her paint brushes and just come and paint with us. Uh, some backstory for the painting for context of the uh, the backstory well there's going to be a big red area here which is why this hen here is is red technically there is a big light red light coming from here but i'm going to tone it down so this this hand like you can disregard this hand it's going to be fully like changed so just don't mind this this is bad <laughs> um yeah so i'm going to paint the skin tones almost normally and then uh glaze and create the effects afterwards because i have several characters and i had issues with all the skin tones as you can see this this here is yeah it's too red at, at first i wanted some extremely bright red light coming from this direction and now i'm going to go for more for um more a sort of an ambient glazed glazed um glazed red effects stuff like that how what the what what the what on earth are you talking about bug the theory that Bob Ross paintings were where he put his dead bodies. Ew, what, what, ew, this is gross. What is this? 
Is this some 4chan kind of um, kind of theories? S sounds like it. Well, I find it, I find it strange, Bob, that you can't figure it out. That you can't figure out how to glaze. Are you the real Bob Ross? It's starting to freak me out. It's starting to freak me out because the real Bob Ross, I'm pretty sure, shouldn't be in the chat. I'm gonna check that my door is locked. But I guess if the ghost of Bob Ross was coming coming back, it he would just want to paint with us and just have fun and paint, you know, little happy trees. Stuff like that. He would be a part of the Discord. But he would definitely know how to glaze. Yeah, I agree. Like, if I was coming back as a ghost, I would not waste my time, you know, making, you know, um, making uh, weird noises. I would just, um, I would just come, come back to uh, just uh, finish my unfinished uh, paintings. You know, they always Command. say studio cam for ten seconds. They always say that. Uh, <laughs> That ghosts are here for unfinished business, and one day, back to normal. Hopefully, the the as late as 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 possible. I hope uh, when I die, I'm probably going to have some unfinished paintings still in the making. Maybe this one will still be unfinished. Who knows? But um, the one thing is, it's pretty certain, like guarantee that. I'm not gonna die and have all my paintings all finished and ready to be, uh, to be, to be, to go through the, like, you know, go through the show. So I'll, I'll have some unfinished paintings. That's for sure. So I'll come back as a ghost. And what, what do I, like, I am lucky enough to come back. I'm a ghost and I'm lucky enough to come back and you think I'm not gonna try to finish my paintings? What kind of ghost would I be? Like imagine you 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 come back from the dead like as a, in the form of a ghost and you you waste your time like scaring people for Halloween. It sucks. Scaring teenagers in in you know. Nah. Command studio cam for 10 seconds. I'm not doing this. If I come back as a ghost, I'm finishing those back paintings. Back to normal. <laughs> yeah, pretty much I am. But it's going to be pretty hard to make the brushes levitate, though. I'm worried that I'm going to be as good with um, by levitating the brush. Where is Bob Ross? Is he still here in chat? Am I, am I tripping right now? Because it's getting pretty late here. Oh, you're still here, Bob.
Hold on, hold on. This is exactly... How did you have this username? You can only be the real one. <laughs> oh, this one is not verified. No, they won't allow you to even use the, the, the username, technically. You can do it with um, by using spacings and stuff, or by you know maybe using a a zero instead of a no. That's crazy that you have this username though. Well, what's your real name though? Because it's going to be weird to call you Bob Ross. Is is your real name Bob? But welcome here, though. Um, well, strangely, Evie, yeah. The, the, why do you make art? For a lot of people, it's also something that's supposed to survive the, the death. Like, your body is going to the body is going to decay way earlier than the painting and the painting is a trace of your presence on earth a lot of people are making art as kind of a you know leaving a little trace of of their existence in this world and uh so i'm not worried uh it's not like i'm worried no, it's not like I'm not worried not to die. I, I make everything I can not to die. It's just I'm thinking if I come back as a ghost, because I'll most likely, I'll, I'll most likely when I die, I'll, I'll have some unfinished paintings. And you know what they say about the ghosts, that they always come back for unfinished like business. <laughs> And that's what I was thinking, and, and mostly I was mostly joking, you know, jo joking. So um, don't uh, don't listen to me. It's past past eleven p.m. here, so pretty much what they say has no meaning at all. Well, if I turn into a ghost, I will try to keep change, to keep my name, though. I guess, unfortunately, you can't just uh, come back as a ghost and have a regular life. If I really came back as a ghost, I would want to come back to my family and just... Uh, just say, hey, it's me. It's just like, now you can just put stuff into me and through me and now i'm not going to block the camera anymore with my head so i'll come back i'll say hey let's do this stream i'm here from the afterlife let's start this stream together everybody so the internet connection is kind of crappy here but uh let's start this stream <laughs> And finally, finally, you you will not be bothered by my big face in front of the camera. It's the final solution. Yeah, exactly. I'll have Steven. 
I'll use AI, you know, to mitigate the limitations of uh, not having a body anymore. <clears throat> try to make stuff levitate. Try to, like the biggest challenge is trying to make your your paintbrush levitate. That that seems to be tricky. Can I ask a random? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, often like no, it's not like de depression because I haven't been, you know, um, I've ne I've never been diagnosed, you know, by a professional, but I have some very down phase, and I'm I'm just talking artistically speaking. I have some very down phases where. It feels like everything I paint is is crap and and I'm not getting there and feel very stuck. Yeah, the the, the red here, don't 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 look for the red. That's why I, I, I made it like that. It's like this is uh, it will change. <laughs> but yeah, artistically speaking, I have phases where I go really like um I have very negative look at my paintings. And and it was the case for this one which is why which is the reason why this painting got got kept on the side for so long. Uh, this painting is really I I really struggled to uh, to to finish this one. Still not finished. No, I've picked it up after I left it for a while. I saw a video of a puppy getting mad at his own hiccups. Well, that sounds like the best video ever. Yes, I paint enough and progress is so slow that I feel stuck and not talented enough. Uh, yeah, progress is... Um, it, it's hard. It's hard to measure progress. So sometimes you have to be lenient with yourself and, and, and also Yes, it is very difficult to evaluate the progression that you've that you went through, which is why it's a good idea to record what you do. Have a little, you know, kind of a journal or kind of a maybe what I say is often use Instagram as a sort of a a platform for your journey if if it's what you're into or use any you know social media that you create specifically um, taking people through with you in your uh, sort of your artistic pursuits stating from the very beginning hey this is not this is not for a it, like I'm not a professional I'm trying to get better and this is my my progression and this is <coughs> I often suggest that because it kind of um, forces you to go out there show what you do and it also keeps a track of your progress yeah I'm also like that I'm really not big in a uh, very big Instagram person <laughs> says the guy who has not been posting for oh my god i don't know how long but and um yeah some other way to record your progression can be interesting as well the good thing about instagram is you have like 
uh, an audience that so it kind of keeps you on your keeps you on your toes in a way How do you keep the paint wet enough to blend? Uh, you have to use a medium, but if you use oil paint, normally it doesn't dry this fast. So I'm going to assume that you're not using oil paint. Because it's not such a big problem with oil. Yeah, use a critic. I knew it. I, you didn't have to say. I see so, so much great art and I feel overwhelmed. Yeah, that's the problem with Instagram. It's like when you start comparing yourself to others, it's not good. But you know, just keep track of your, of your work. Keep a journal, maybe a visual journal. Your sketchbook could be a journal. You could take photos, print photos of your, of your paintings in progress, like you take a a photo of each of the stages just to keep keep a, a memory of what it's been like before you reached a certain point and this way you'll you'll be more you know you'll be nicer with yourself you'll allow yourself to you know make progress slowly but surely Otherwise, if you're completely forgetting <coughs> what what it was like before, every every time you look at the present work, you say, oh, it's not good enough. But try to think about how bad it was before. Now it makes you feel that you're going somewhere. So comparing yourself to who you were before, who you were before, is something, uh, something important. Do you also paint still life? Uh, sometimes, but not not much, not many. I get a thing when painting that I want to finish it as soon as I start. Yeah, painting takes patience. That's that's for sure. And there's no way around it. Uh, a painting takes. A whole lot of patience is something you've got to learn and it's also good like um, I think especially in the the modern world like the curse of the modern humans we're so used to instant gratification scrolling and you know dopamine boosts all of the time all the time like within a couple seconds and yeah it's not this the, the type of stuff that you can get with uh, traditional oil painting it takes a while. It takes a while to get good. And even when you're good, it takes a while to get it done. So um, it's a good cure for, you know, the, the curse of the modern era of instant gratification. All right. Good night, Evie. Uh, what skill would you like to learn? I would like to learn um, how to sculpt. I would love to try that someday. Great things require time, yeah, definitely. <coughs>
what what um what are skills that you guys in chat would like to learn yeah for me sculpting is definitely something that i would add and um i need to figure out something because i it's really itching like i i feel like i'm so ready to start and i know that if i start touching sculpting i'm going to dedicate my entire time to that so I'll really need to almost redesign the entire studio because once I start sculpting, once I start, you know, modeling, sculpting, you know, I'm, I'm talking sculpting in general, but I'm modeling like 3D. Um, I'm probably going to have to put my paintings in a different part of the studio and use this main room for sculpting because there's a big problem with um, dust and dirt. Uh, I can't really paint and, and, and sculpt in the same space. So I'll, I'll have to figure this out. But yeah, this is definitely something I would like to do. The only problem though is also that it's going to require uh, a lot of equipment, a lot of equipment, a lot of new, uh, a lot of new stuff to purchase and um, for basically for nothing just for the love of art <laughs> so yeah you never stop learning that's that's true that's definitely something and that's good that's good like whenever i feel you know low in life whenever i feel like i'm i'm not accomplishing anything much I generally tend to, you know, find something new to learn and it sort of brings a sort of a new, a new, a new sense to my life. So I, I like to generally, every year also, I'll learn something completely new and go full hardcore and learn everything I can learn in in it or maybe you know still be surface level but I'm going to still invest a lot of time when I find something that I enjoy I like to dedicate a lot of time to it and yeah a whole new world exactly yeah what kind of sculpting clay would what i would like is obviously you start with clay clay is always whatever you do you use clay in a way in one way or another what i would li love is like really stone like stone sculpture really really like marble i would just love to get good enough to just sculpt out of marble but you know sculpting is is a bit of everything you have like you have modeling you have sculpting and wood also would interest me but i would love, love to do um bronze also uh, the the full package i want to make sculpting of like the full full package i want to try everything see what works best but yeah you know <laughs> it's a big big project What is a question you would be like to be asked, but no one has ever asked? <laughs> well, what kind of question is that? Because if I... A question that nobody asked, but nobody asked it, but I would like it to be asked. Huh, hold on. Hold on. I don't know. I'm not expecting people to ask me certain questions, so I don't know. Start with something uh, small like flint napping. Yeah, well, I'll start with... What I'll start with, you know, is regular clay modeling. You know, you take a little figure, uh, you know, make a little frame out of uh, out of wood and... and, uh, and, and uh, um, metal wiring 
kind of create a little skeleton and then you model your clay on that um, then make make a more terracotta so um, you, you put it in in an oven to preserve it and after that um, after that you 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 don't have to do that you, most of the time you use the clay as a model and from this model you decline it into other versions so you can go from clay to stone and do you, you know do sculpting or you can do you can do a, a mold of your uh, model and then use this mold to make other sculptures in different materials there's just so much like i i know a lot of the theory is i i know it just by um, just general knowledge of sculpting of uh, what it takes i know the i know the how to say <laughs> again the theory mostly of how to create a mold how to you know do this kind of stuff i know how bronze is is um cast cast casted cast bronze is cast i guess uh but i've never done it i i never even went to you know a foundry and see how it works in real life it must be very impressive i, I can't wait to to do that one day like you know you have your your piece and and these guys just pour the the, the bronze the liquid bronze it must be so so exciting as an experience little charms with polymer clay polymer clay is also great like great a great um substitute to clay without the, the downsides of actual natural clay you can you can just um it can harden pretty easily so that's nice charms i guess you know little um you know little pendants i is, is that it have you ever painted plein air or outside <coughs> you can you can say both um yeah i have painted plein air definitely i went into um into the i went uh let me try to find it about plein air so plein air is not in my list of things to do because well it's something that i i already know Kind of. Um, okay, so here. I've been painting plein air here. Let me show you. So this is what I've been doing. This was for my oil painting course. I was in the at the the source of the Lou. It's a river in France, in the Jura Mountains, and, and it was breathtaking. It was breathtaking places, like inside of a, a natural sort of a circus. And Gustave Courbet painted it back in the days, and this is the painting by Courbet. And I went there, so it, he painted it several times because he was from the same place and I was living not far away back then. So I went there to the source of the Lou and um, find a, almost the same spot that Courbet had. And it was just awesome. It was great. The water just... Um, Just looks amazing. I was lucky enough actually I was there. I didn't the, the drone was not mine. There was this dude just uh, capturing footage of the place with his drone and I decided to paint it. This is where I've been. Uh, so this is not the only plein air that I did, but this is the most um definitely the most fun 
plein air. And here is me doing it. I love how with plein air you have, you know, I love when there's the view and you see um, you see the model in the place. And I, I really love when the, the, the painting is almost a miniaturized version of the place. It always feels good to see it like that. I, I, I've always been a fan of these shots where you see the, the canvas like that. Oh, that's awesome, Nupu. Well, I hope you can make it. Feels like a great way to um feels like a great way uh, to be a student. I I did it in um in Germany and this was yeah, the best best time of my of my student, my university years was uh spent abroad. If you could choose, if you could, would you choose not to not be born? What is that makes life more gratifying and satisfactory rather than dreadful and awful? Hmm. That's very philosophical. Like you can make an existential, um, you can make an existential essay on that, on that question. And I prefer to make paintings out of that. That question. Actually, I have a painting that kind of was reaching around the same kind of points. The, the, the title of the painting was The Advantage of Inexisting. I almost invented the word inexisting. Inexisting as the, the opposite of existing. So to just talk about the fact of not having been born at all like you know with the like in the song uh, na, na, wish I had never been born at all so in existing being kind of that and um, and it was a very interesting painting actually I had like I don't know what I what my idea is but I still find existing much more exciting than not existing at all. It's just like the universe, like if you change a single digit in the, the, the mass of the electron, the universe could not exist as it does today. Like there, there would be a whole bunch of nothing instead of, you know, stars and galaxies and us. Would that be better? There would be less suffering, but the suffering is even more exciting than nothingness in a way. I don't know. Did you tell me? Plus, it's not really something that you choose. Like, you don't choose to exist. So that's not even a question. The question is, how do you exist? But if you're trying to find if this world makes sense or not, the response, I'm very Camusian in my philosophy. It doesn't. Like, the world is absolutely absurd in its core. There is no meaning to life. Existence is just merely existence. We exist, and it's completely absurd that we do. It doesn't make it completely um, void of 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 meaning because the meaning is something we can create there is no meaning in the fact that we exist but by the actions that we choose to to take we create our our own meaning in a way we are the the manufacturers of of the meaning that's lacking in the universe the universe doesn't create meaning it creates you know being but we create meaning so the, if you feel that the world is meaningless if it's because you, it's your job to bring meaning into this world and i think that making paintings making art is the 
the very best way to do it. But that's just my take. It's almost 1 a.m. now. Good night. Yeah, I'm gonna go, I think, as well, because I'm going into ramblings. And But it was a fun, fun session. It's midnight for me. I think if we get to know our creator, it gives us meaning. Exactly, yeah. It's a way to see it. You can exist by not existing. Huh. All right, my friends. Screenshot taken in the Discord. It was a fun stream. I'll uh, see you for the next one. So next one should be Tuesday. So I'll see you on Tuesday, my friends. Thank, thank you for being here. And uh, take care. See you for